So I'm going to show you how to do a long tail cast on first, and then we can talk a bit more about it afterwards. To start out, you are going to want a long tail, hence the name. So with a normal or with kind of more simple cast on methods, you start out with your slip knot on the end of the yarn, but with a long tail cast on, you do your slip knot kind of in the middle of the tail. So you want to give yourself quite a bit of length depending on the width of your project. I like to just kind of wing it and estimate how much yarn I think I'm going to need. If I end up using more, then you can always just trim off the, the extra length that you don't need. So make yourself a pretty long tail. And then in the middle of that tail is where we're going to make the slip knot. So to make a slip knot, just make a loop like so. Put your fingers through the loop and then pull the yarn through there and pull it tight. Now you can adjust the slip knot, make it tighter, make it looser. Put the slip knot on the needle. And when you put it on the needle, you just want to make sure that the part of the yarn, I guess the arm of the yarn, that is the tail is facing you. So here's the tail. This is just the end of the yarn. This is in front of me, so it's, it's facing me. And then the back is attached to the rest of my yarn here. So this is the back and this is the front. Once you have that, grab it like so. Um, like all things with knitting, uh, you know, do things gently and nicely. You don't need to grip things. Like uh, it's when you're first learning a new technique, it's kind of the tendency to, to kind of choke things and, and hold things really tight and get your stitches all bunched up, but just gently hold it and then take your thumb and your index finger and slip it through the hole like this to open it. And just make a note that your thumb is holding the yarn that's in front and your index finger is holding the yarn that's in the back. And now you're ready to start casting on. So to do that, Take your needle and you go down to the thumb and you lift up the loop like so, lift up the yarn and keep it on the thumb. Don't pull it off yet. You're going to go back up and now pick up a loop around the yarn around your index finger. So go around and then you go down through the thumb hole like that. So. Do it a couple more times, of course. So starting out again, you've got your thumb and your index finger like so. Thumb is with the yarn that's facing you. Index finger is with the yarn that's to the back of you. Go down with your needle and pick up a loop around the thumb, but don't pull the loop off the thumb yet. Go back to the index finger, pick that up and pull it through the loop that you've created with the thumb. And now you can let go and kind of pull it tight, but not too tight because it's knitting. So again, you go down, pick up a stitch, loop it around and pull it tight. Go down, pick up the index finger, loop it tight. So once you have it down, it's pretty easy to remember. It's just muscle memory and you can actually end up doing it pretty fast. Um, it's probably not as fast as some of the more simple cast on methods that there are, but this is probably one of the simpler intermediate cast ons, I guess that, that you'll do. Um, and it's also, I mean, it looks really nice. So what is the actual difference between long tail cast ons and I guess kind of the simple cast on method that, um, maybe you've learned, or maybe I have taught you in my videos to be honest, this is controversial to say, but there's not a huge difference between the cast on methods. The long tail cast on is just a little more polished. It looks a little bit nicer, um, but I'll let you kind of judge for yourself. So here we have two different methods. Uh, one is long tail cast on and one is simple cast on. Um, I guess I should just show you what the simple cast on is. So the cast on method that I do to simplify things and the cast on method I use in a lot of these videos that I teach, I just do the slip knot like normal and then I just wrap my yarn around like so with my index finger. Um, just using loops and all that. Um, the problem with this method, I mean, it looks fine. It's really easy to, to get up and running, but the problem is when you start to actually go in and knit, 
that first row that you knit is a lot more difficult because the you're dealing with just one loop on the needle and when you actually go into knit it's just a little cumbersome to try and maneuver um, but of course that kind of depends on your tension the needles the yarn all those kind of factors go into play so for a beginner i like to teach just because it's it's simple it's it saves time having to explain some simple thing rather than explaining some huge long tail cast on method that is going to exhaust them and then when it's time to actually learn the actual knitting process is a whole other thing so i just like to keep it simple just make loops put it on your needle and then start knitting from there but again downside is it's a little tricky that first row that you knit with the long tail method you've already got kind of a, a base of stitches that is being used as kind of a buffer so it's easier to knit that first row of stitches with a long tail cast on so the difference is you can probably guess which is which this one is slightly choppier, sloppier edge to it. Um, this one is a bit more refined and it's a straighter edge. This one is my simple cast on. It's a little botchy. It's a little, it's harder to control the tension. It's a little loose. This one is straight across. It's even, the stitches are nice and there's kind of a nice little like edge border to it. The long tail cast on method is also supposed to be stretchier. Um, in my experience, I don't find that to be the case. My long tail cast on is, is pretty much equal to the simple cast on. I, I don't really see much of a difference in there, but I guess for like a large scale project, it might have bigger implications. Another thing you'll notice is that the end of my tail, the end of, or I guess the, yeah, the tail of the yarn is on opposite sides. So simple cast on, you've got it right here long tail cast on, you've got it on the left. And that's because you're using essentially two strands of, of yarn with the long tail cast on to create that little buffer zone. Um, so it's going over instead of staying at the end, if that makes any sense. But to be honest, whatever cast on method works for you is, is the best method. I'm always a proponent, proponent of that. Because if you're knitting a scarf, people are gonna be looking at the scarf, nobody goes and looks for the end of the scarf and inspects the edge. It's just not a thing that people are gonna care about unless you're looking for it. So do whatever works best for you. But that is the long tail cast on and hopefully that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite cast on method and I will see you next time. Also, if you're still watching this video, um, which you don't have to be because it is over, I'm just gonna remind you to buy my book the Disassembly of Doreen Durand. It's my debut novel published by Sandstone Press. It's out in the UK, but um, there's a lot of different stores that ship it internationally as well. Um, one that I would recommend is Waterstones. They have great international shipping for small fee. It's also on Amazon, all the usual suspects. The book is mm, has nothing to do with knitting, so <laughs> there's Unfortunately, there's no crossover there. The book is about a woman who sees a terrible accident but does nothing about it and runs away. Um, and there's kind of this little police cat and mouse game that happens. So there's a lot of mystery thriller elements, but it's also got some kind of surreal literary things going on as well. But most importantly, it's just kind of a beautiful book. It looks great on a bookshelf, looks great in bookshops, and it will look great on your Instagram grid when you buy it and you take a picture of it. But more importantly, when you read it and hopefully you enjoy it. And yeah, so I guess that's kind of my version of, of like and subscribe that, you know, you're supposed to do. Uh, but I guess it's buy and read. <laughs>